another art video with Mr. Byte. Today we are learning about abstraction as a process for making original artwork. And we're going to be looking at abstraction based on real things. So many of us aren't even really clear on what abstraction is, so let's get into that. Here on the screen, we see an example on the top left of a photograph of a real place, and in the bottom right, an abstract painting, which captures a very similar scene. Abstraction was an art movement and process that mostly started around the time that people started to use photography to take pictures of the world. Now, before that, artists had spent a lot of time and effort trying to be able to take and make pictures that show the world or show people the way that we think that they look, to recreate things that exist. But the camera was faster, cheaper, easier, more portable to do that with, and took a lot less time and, and years training to be really good at. So artists had to figure out a new reason for making art. And one reason that came out around this time was that artists were really trying to capture the experience, what it was like to be a person in a moment, rather than capturing the facts of the moment, it's more about the feeling of the experience. So the top left shows every leaf and every branch and every little bit of every thicket and plant and every ripple in the water. The painting, shows the text shows a texture in the water that implies rippling shows a texture on the branches and leaves that imply leaves without showing each one individually the lines and swooping shapes the curving forms of this make a feeling or a sense that there's a wind rustling through the texture in the mountain creates an interest without having to have a massive amount of detail <clears throat> <clears throat> so, abstraction then, at least partially, can include removing detail from real things to come up with a new, more interesting, or appealing art idea about that real thing. One of the famous abstract artists was a guy named Piet Mondrian, who said, I wish to approach truth as closely as is possible, and therefore I abstract everything until I arrive at the fundamental quality of objects. So for Mondrian, he's trying to approach truth, not the truth of how many leaves are there on that tree, but truth as what does it feel like? What is the soul or spirit of this experience, of this moment, of this tree? He does that by abstracting everything he looks at until he arrives at what he considered the fundamental quality of objects. And for, Mio, for Mondrian, the end of that investigation came out something like these. Artworks that had primary colors, geometric shapes, and lines without much else. But he didn't start here. Mondrian made a serial investigation. Now, what does serial mean? It means consisting of, forming a part of, or taking place in a series. A series is a collection of things that have a start and an end. So Mondrian's serial investigation had an end, which we've already seen. And here's the start. Now this looks a lot more like a real thing, so we can see how he might have been looking at a real tree at twilight or a sunrise, and abstracted the image by removing much of the unnecessary detail to just capture the tree and the effect of the light. At this time, Mondrian, like many other artists of his day, was painting in what we call an impressionist style, which is trying to capture the impression of the light and mood of a moment. It's really trying to capture what it feels like to be in a place. And Mondrian liked that, but he wanted to capture not just the truth of being in a place, but the real fundamental truth of that tree or of that place. Not just being there, but of that place. So he started that, and he continued by abstracting, by this time removing color, by simplifying the lines that make up the tree branches. 
And every step of the way, we have less, we've removed some of the tree trunk and the lines are becoming more straight and more simple. And each step, the lines simplify, the trunk becomes less obvious, the relationship between the tree, the tree trunk and the tree branches is more and more hard to tell. But Mondrian is finding what he feels are the fundamental pieces of these objects. And with each step along the way, we can see how this series of investigations brought Mondrian to his primary colored boxes. Now, we are not intending to make art that is quite as non-objective, meaning it doesn't look like any particular thing, but it's a useful skill and uh, things to see, a good process. So Mondrian used at least five techniques to make things abstract. And we're going to name these five techniques. There are others probably, but these five will get us where we need to go. First is simplification, reducing the information in an object. We saw that on the first image where the painting of the tree didn't have every leaf or every branch, but it had the simple implication. It made it look like a tree, even though it was missing some of those. We have stylization, which is altering shapes and colors. In the Mondrian painting of a tree, the first painting that, of a tree that we saw by Mondrian, we see that he has removed the browns and the greens that we might expect to see in that natural scene, the brown of the tree trunk and the green in the grass, and instead is really only using blue, red, and black. Fragmentation is breaking the object into smaller parts, and we saw some of that as Mondrian was removing the form of the tree trunk. We also see some fragment, uh, some reassembly when he started to put the pieces that he had broken apart back together into a new way. Reassembly can be putting them together in a new way or in the an, an uh, in the same way that they were before. And finally is distortion, which is changing the sizes or shapes of parts of the whole thing. So that is stretching or changing the sizes of things. As we're looking at this photo here of a shell, I want to notice some of the in particular details of this object. So we see a pattern made up of individual lumps or bumps of color. The color changes from pink to light pink to light gray, dark gray, light gray, dark gray, light gray, dark gray, pink, and dark pink on the outside. There's a pattern of these objects that are stacked, forming lines, lines of colors. We also see these sort of bumps or bulbs, which have a hole in the center, and then a series of circles that get bigger around that. We call this concentric circles, when there's a circle with another circle outside of it, and a bigger one around it, and a bigger one around it, and a bigger one around it. This also has a circle around those concentric circles made up of individual little circles. So there's a lot of pattern and detail in here that we could work with, and an artist might have made either of these two compositions based on that shell. We see the same sort of pattern made up of lines made of individual chunks that are stacked by color and that the colors change on the right hand example or an example possibly made based on the sort of orbs or bumps on the shell in the left. Keeping in mind these five methods for abstraction, simplification, stylization, fragmentation, reassembly, and distortion, we want to take a moment and look at some artwork by famous American artist Georgia O'Keeffe. And we also want to keep in mind that as we are artists and making artwork on a page, we want to figure out good ways to compose that page. Now, we may remember hearing about principles of design. These are ideas about how artists arrange the stuff on their page. Now, each of these paintings is an abstraction that O'Keeffe made by zooming way in by looking very closely at a real thing. And we see some different uh, principles of design that helped her to arrange how her page is set up. So in the top right, we see a sense of movement. This is created as we look into this very close up of a shell by following this curving scrolling line. And that line moves the eye around the page all on its own, but then 
the shapes that come out of that line that make up the shell, the fact that the shapes get smaller and have different shading as they progress, the fact that the shapes get closer together, all of this creates a really nice sense of movement in this painting, which guides the eye in an appealing way. In the bottom, we see what we might call emphasis. Emphasis is how we indicate that one part is more important than the rest. Georgia O'Keeffe did this by having a really strong contrast between the light flower and the dark background. Even the lighter areas of the background have strong shadow, which indicate that the like this head of the flower is the most important part. We also have a lot less detail in the background. So there are some lines and veins in the leaves, but it's quite simple when you compare it to the delicate shading and line work in the center of the flower. So by simplifying the background and having contrast between the background and the most important foreground thing, Georgia O'Keeffe helped us to have an emphasis in this painting. And on the top right, we might see some rhythm. Rhythm is made in art, just like in music, by having the same, by forming a pattern of similar sized or shaped things. And if you have a pattern that's consistent throughout a whole page, the artwork will feel very peaceful. We see a little bit of that in this shell painting. If your pattern breaks at some point, like the pattern of these petals, which have a top of the petal, bottom petal, top, top of the petal, the bottom part of the petal, the top of the petal, these shapes repeat one another until this part up here. By having a rhythm all through this section of the painting, the eye is guided to this very active and important area. So all of these demonstrate some thought on the way that the image would be arranged. And then we see a variety of abstract techniques. We see simplification, stylization, maybe no fragmentation in either of these, but definitely some distortion because they're all zoomed in on. They all have some information that is either removed or altered, stylized. So we see a variety of methods to make abstraction as we are arranging the page. In this painting by Matisse, we see some fragmentation and reassembly. Notice that the fragmentation of these oranges or fruit can have the pieces reassembled right back together, even if the lines that cut them apart are still showing. And the lines that cut them apart might be a part of the rest of the scene. The lines that cut the oranges and the table in half seem to be the line showing the back of the table that all of these things are sitting on. We see definitely some stylization. The colors are changed, the shapes are stretched, the shapes are a little lumpy and so forth. This is a very abstract painting. Now, if we look at these three paintings, that are were made in a classroom by other art students, not at Scarborough Middle School. We see that uh, they all have at least three different types of abstraction. We see that the faces have been fragmented and reassembled because eyes should be side by side, not on top of each other. We see that they have been stylized. This bulb in the center of the wrist is kind of weird and a little creepy, but pretty cool too in its own way. A couple of other things to notice. One, notice that the backgrounds reinforce the idea of the main picture, but don't distract us. They're relatively simple. Even this, the icy fortress of solitude behind Superman, is still a relatively simple background that doesn't keep the eye moving away from Superman. It focuses us on the character. And also notice, even though abstraction is removing detail, we don't want to remove all detail. So these characters still have shading. They still have three-dimensional areas. They still have a lot going on, maybe more than they would have if they were just drawn naturally. There is a lot happening. So abstraction is about finding the creative options, finding good elements or details that you love and really accentuating those while removing some other things. It's not about making things easy, although it can be about making things simplified. 
Now, I'd like to show, to end this discussion, looking at these two pictures. They both have the same image, the same topic, the same frame, the same composition, but end up as wildly different artwork. And that is one of the wonderful things about abstraction. You can look, two different artists can look at the close up photo of a lion's face and pick very different details to focus on. The details that you focus on often guide the abstraction methods that you choose and the, uh, the compositional strategies that you're going to employ. So we are going to be stylizing, simplifying, fragmenting, reassembling, or distorting the important details on real things from the real world that you can look at, either a photo or the actual thing of. We're going to use that as a basis to figure out and make a new, awesome, abstract artwork. Happy making.